Hello everyone, it's Christina of Crafty Plus. I'm here to share this Halloween card that I made for Nene. Nene is Renee Villanueva here on YouTube and she's hosting her fourth annual Trick or Treat Challenge. And I'm so glad I finally found time to play along. I was traveling and I've got work stuff going on for a new consulting client and uh, it's just been a little bit crazy but I did get a chance to make this card and I really love how this little greeting farm creeper crew girl came out I think her name is Thursday and I had a lot of fun coloring her up with Copic markers as you can see here I love the little texture that I was able to achieve just with some dotting for the coloring plus in the center area you see the light little dots there that was actually done by erasing with the Copic Zero marker and I think it comes across as a nice like fleecy texture <laughs> and I thought I would do kind of a sassy Halloween card with this little creeper crew girl by printing out on my computer this sentiment that says hand over the candy and nobody gets hurt this is to represent all those teenagers a little too old for trick-or-treating but still want to play along so this little girl is kind of dressed up for Halloween but just more really <laughs> looking for candy so she's got this little kitty cat toque on and otherwise she's in regular clothes but I decided to give her some fun funky hair colors by putting in like a red streak in each of her little pigtails and otherwise giving her like golden blonde or yellow hair I tried to keep with uh, autumn colors for this and just for some dimension I fussy cut her out, inked the edges and then popped her up on double sided foam adhesive so there's a little uh, dimension there. Plus for the little kitty cat button eyes I popped those up again. I stamped this part of the image out twice and colored this up and then popped the little buttons up on double sided foam adhesive too. Plus I gave it a little coating of glossy accents for a little bit of extra shine. And then for the eyes and the lips I don't know if you're going to be able to tell but there's a shimmer or shine and a glossiness because I finally picked up a Sakura glaze pen in black which gives a really nice shiny finish so I did the eyes her eyebrows and her lips with that and I'm gonna attach here a process video showing you guys how to make this shaped card with this diamond die it's really fun and easy so I'm gonna use the diamond dies candy corn mini album die and create my car front with three different scrap pieces of pattern paper for my scrap box. I'm just moving around the little scraps of paper to see how much of each color I want and then I'm gonna tape the back of each of these scraps together with just some plain scotch tape. Now I'm gonna run it through my Big Shot and I'm just trying to make sure that it, everything is straight to give a bit of a rounded look to the candy corn, I'm going to separate each of the separate segments and then run the top and bottom of the orange polka dot scrap through the bottom part of that candy corn die so that there's a slight arch to the orange section. And where that meets up with the yellow and the white sections, um, it will make the candy corn look a little bit more rounded rather than flat. I think it's those kinds of details for cards that really make the cards come to life. And then to add an even more finished and more 3D look, I'm going to be blending on Tim Holtz Distress Ink for each segment so that all the edges of each segment have a little bit of distress coloring which makes the colors a little bit more rich where the different segments meet up against each other. So for the orange polka dot paper I'm blending on spiced marmalade, for the yellow segment I'm blending on mustard seed, and then for this white segment I'm using antique linen. I toyed with a little bit of a gray but I thought the antique linen was warmer. Now that I'm finished with the card front it's time to work on the card base. I'm using some black cardstock and I'm scoring on my scoreboard just to the left of where the die will be. I'm making sure that the whole die front will fit with a little bit of an overhang. Now I'm just going to snip off about 
maybe about half an inch away from that score line so that I can fold it over and run it through my die cutting machine with just a little bit of that die where the cutting blade is hanging over the fold. Now I'm being careful to position this exactly right with that cutting edge over the fold and then I'm running it through my Big Shot machine. This is what the card base front will look like with that little tab hangover. And I'm gonna cut another black piece of cardstock with a full candy corn for the card base back. Now with both pieces cut, I'm using my favorite wet glue, which is art glitter glue with a fine tip nozzle. And I'm putting that glue on that little tab overhang. And I am matching up the back of the card base along with that front. And you'll see there's a little bit of a cheat there, but not to worry because all of that's gonna be covered up with the card front pieces. I've added more art glitter glue to the back of that yellow scrap. And I'm positioning that exactly on that black card base front. Then I'm going to do the white portion at the top of the candy corn and then finally the orange middle section and that needs to go on the top because the curved lines at the top and bottom of that segment make the whole candy corn look more three-dimensional or curved. Now you could skip this next section if you wanted to write your message inside with a silver pen or if you did your card base itself on white cardstock. But because I didn't, I used black cardstock, I am now going to be hand cutting out the inside liner sheet for the card. And all I did was put my die down and traced around the inside of the die so that there would be about an eighth of an inch all the way around this liner sheet and the card base back sheet. Even though I traced the shape with a pencil, there were little faint pencil marks that I wanted to make sure I erase, so I'm taking a white eraser and just erasing those faint lines. Now because of that little cheat on the left hinge, I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of paper and draw another faint line so that I can cut away a tiny little bit of that left side of this candy corn liner so that the card will be able to open and close without going right up against the liner sheet. Use a little more wet glue, glue that into place, and voila, the whole card base is done. I hope you enjoyed this process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in making a purchase at Diamond Dyes, please consider using the coupon code THANKSCHRISTINA and you'll get 10% off and free worldwide shipping on all orders of $35 or more. I'll put a link in the description box below to Diamond Dyes as well as to Nene's Trick or Treat Challenge video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye!